But again, this is week seven of remote learning. We still have six weeks to go before the end of the school year, which is going to be June 26. Um, all eighth grader students should be uh, sitting next to you listening to this presentation. The agenda is going to include um, information about high school offers and wait lists, the grading policy for the eighth graders, the ring orders that were made back in November, uh, diploma distributions for students that will need um, graduation promotion to the ninth grade, picture orders for students that took the picture, uh, moving up for money, which now is going to be a virtual moving up for money, and is still scheduled for June 24, dress code and music performance by students, and a tassel project for graduates virtual profile, which I'm gonna get into uh, more details about what that means. So right now, daily attendance, um, if some of the announcements that we wanna make sure we cover tonight, daily attendance is still going on. Uh, please help us have your kids check their attendance every morning. I continue to receive questions such as, Miss, I did it on the teacher, um, homeroom teacher website. I sent an email. Where do I do it? There are various ways to do it. You can text me. You can email any of us. You can put it on the teacher, um, on the teacher's Google Classroom every morning when you checked in. But you need to check your attendance. It is of most um, importance that we record that you are okay every single day because DOE is monitoring with us our interactions with students. So we need to show, demonstrate that we are interacting with all our families every single day. Um, parents emails update, we're still collecting parents um, emails. If you have not shared your email, please do so at this time. We will take note of it. If you already share it, do it again because we can always make sure that we record it initially uh, correctly. Uh, baby pictures. We sent an email asking eighth graders, please email me your baby pictures ASAP. Without baby pictures, they won't be in the yearbook and then your yearbook is going to miss them. So we won't be able to have that memory as part of the yearbook for all your children. So every student can take a baby picture, they can text it to me, or they can take a picture and email it to me as well. Um, internet and social media safety note. Um, just quickly, parents, please monitor the way your kids are using the internet. Um, using the internet, whether it's with us or with other people, it is still important that parents are vigilant or where, where your children go and who your children are engaging um, virtually every day. Um, sometimes kids get bored and they end up in the wrong places or talking to the wrong people. So please, I know many of you trust your kids, but it's important that you never forget to make time when they not expected for you to go in and check in what they are up to. So that's very important. We have uh, Mr. Duran, would you like to provide the announcement for parent engagement every week? So yes, thank you, Ms. Well. So every Wednesday at four o'clock, we have the parents meeting for the English speaking, our English speaking families. And for Spanish speaking families, every Thursday at four o'clock. It's always the same ID. I always send the uh, emails on Tuesdays. Or you could see whatever emails in the past, and it's always the same IDs for the particular uh, meeting. Okay. Um, in addition, uh, since we started the remote learning, in a way for us to continue engaging our eighth grade students, I am conducting weekly Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesday at 2 p.m. sessions with the kids. On Mondays, I do decision-making scenarios. On Tuesday, we do college virtual tours. And on Wednesdays, I cook from my kitchen and I share easy recipes to um, expose the kids to something that for some parents is a concern because they're very young, but yet we always need to think ahead that this is a life skill. And the sooner they start learning um, these skills, the better off they are going to be later on in life. Um, Ms. Rios, are you available for to talk about the tutoring? Hi guys, so 
um, we took a poll last week for the eighth graders to see what classes they're having most difficulty with. And at this time, it seems that is math and ELA. So we got a, a teacher and a CUNY tutor to volunteer the time via Google Meet. Um, Tuesday, Thursdays from 3 to 4 p.m. for math with Mr. Paller. And on Fridays from 12 to 1 with Mr. Alcantara, which is uh, more for Spanish speaking or ESL students. Um, and then myself and Ms. Shoshana, which is our intern for guidance, has also volunteered. So we're doing social studies ELA from 12 to 1 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Ms. Paul. Yes, ma'am. I shared um, something in, in regards to parents' email. Yes, please. Yes. And I know that um, as part of the announcements, Ms. Paul um, reminded the parents that they need, um, you know, we would like to have their email address. And, there's, and the reason behind it is that if you would like to have access to Google Classroom, and see the assignments and know when the assignments are due and, and when teachers have a new post on Google Classroom, we you will be able to do that if you provide the, your email address to us. So teachers will be able to enter your email address and you would get notifications for, from Google Classroom. Also, we are in the process of um, doing, um, allowing parents to also have access to Lightsell so Lightsail is a reading platform that our students use um, in the building and now during remote learning. So if you would like to have access in terms of the Lexile level, the reading level, and how much progress they're making on Lightsail, and um, including how many minutes they're reading on a daily basis, we will also um, need your parent, you know, your email address. And I noticed that some parents are already entering uh, on the chat their email address. So please, before you know the meeting ends, um, if you can provide your email address to us, we would appreciate it. All right, thank you. I'm um, talking about emails. As you know, all your kids have MS-290 emails. And many times we relied on that email to have the student share the information with you. Um, if you feel comfortable having access to your child's email, so you can get the every information that we send them. Uh, please just check in with us. We will give you their access, um, login information and password. So you can have access from your own phone to check all the emails that go to your student, to the student's email. All right, so high school offers. By now, 176 of our students have received a high school offer. A high school offer automatically means that out of all the schools that you have applied, one of the schools found that they are a match for your child. Therefore, they send you a letter um, earlier in March. And also, I have been communicating with you, and Ms. Shoshana has been communicating with you, and Ms. Rios has also been communicating with you to confirm that you have received this offer. Many parents, despite of the fact that they included that school name in the list of schools that they applied to, they were not happy or satisfied with the offer. So many of those parents decided that they want to participate in the waitlist process. The waitlist school process means that if we add up more schools to consider your child for September, you're going to be on a waiting list. And a waiting list means that if those schools that you include in the waiting list will have a seat anytime between now and the second week in June, they're going to call you and they're going to tell you, this is ABC school and we have a seat and you are waitlisted with us. Do you want the seat? And if the answer is yes, then the school is going to ask you to call me. So at my end, I can go in and drop, drop, drop off the first offer that you currently have, and it will be replaced with the second offer from the waitlist school that called you. Now, this is not guaranteed. Being in a waitlist doesn't mean that you are going to have a choice to go to another school. It means that if it happens, the school that you have waitlisted will call you and offer it to you. But it is not guaranteed that they're going to call you. So with that said, it is important that you understand the school offer that you already have right now, that is the secure offer 
that you have. And it happens to be one of the schools that your child and you put down when you did the my school application. So that school is not there out of, uh, out of a magic hat. It is one of the 12 or six or five schools that you put into the application when you did it back in December. In addition to that, if you are thinking about sending your kids to charter school, you have to let me know by June 1st. The reason why is that if I don't know that your child is going to a charter school, that means that I'm going to assume that your child is going to the offer public school and I'm going to send your child's records to the public choice school. I'm not going to send your child's record to the charter school. So it is super important that you reach out to me by email and you say, Ms. Poe, my child is going to be um, attending in September to Leadership Charter Academy. Can you please uh, make sure that you know that to the, with the DOE? So once I know that with the DOE, the DOE is not going to be calling you in September, harassing you, oh, why your child is not here in school? Because we're going to take care of that in June. You let me know my child is going to charter school. I will make sure that I made the right notation so the records are sent to the right school that your child will be attending. Ms. Poe, there's a question in the chat, and I'm yeah. just going to add a little bit to the question. Uh, Mary will let you know if uh, high school look at the grades, and I'm assuming that she means either high school when she applied or high school now in the waiting list plus the, the charter schools. Yes, so they, look the they, look at the, they look at the children holistically. The only schools that look at the kids' grade are the schools called screen schools. If you, are, if you apply to a screen schools and you don't have the grades that they're looking for or the test scores that you are looking for, that school is not going to consider you. But then all the other schools look at the kids holistically. They look at the grades, they look at the attendance, and they look at the readiness for high school. All right, the grading policy. Um, uh, the teachers has been talking to students about the grading policy. I know that um, the t uh, parents have been attending the Wednesdays and Thursday parent engagement, and this presentation has also been um, shared with the parents about how kids are going to be graded towards the end of the year. So, so far we know this much. We are not going to use grades. We are going to use letters that determine whether your child is meeting the standards, whether your child needs improvement, or whether your child has work in progress. Whichever category your child will fall in, everything is going to encapsulate these three items. Your child needs to check attendance, your child needs to participate, and your child needs to perform via remote learning. If teachers have enough evidence that your child checks attendance, your child is participating in the video conferences that they host every single week, and your child is performing academically via remote learning, teachers will have enough evidence to recommend that the child gets promoted to the ninth grade. Now, as students that get a recommendation label, work in progress, that means that the child is going to be recommended to continue doing the same work that they're not doing now to do it over the summer. The month of July and half of August, they will continue providing remote learning summer. So students that are not doing what they're supposed to do now, they'll be expected to do the same type of work over the summer. So please be mindful. We have six weeks to go. If in six weeks to go, we cannot demonstrate that students are ready to do high school work, what is the likelihood you know in your children that they will have the stamina to keep up with the work six more weeks during the summer. So please work with us. Please reach out to us. Please push your kids to engage daily and to show that they know what they're doing, that they're understanding. Because if they show that they're learning and we see that they're learning, that's all we need to see. Any questions, Mr. Duran, on the chat?
question? I've been answering some via uh, chat as well, Paul, just to kind of help out. Thank you. All right. Next one, ring orders and diploma distribution. Okay, rings for those parents that order rings. I can safely say that out of 176 students, about 25 students order a graduation ring back in November. Out of those 25 rings, um, about seven kids came back and noticed that the ring had a typo. There was a misprinting on the, on the, on the ring. So we had to send those ring back. The rings are going to be arriving into the school building sometime at the end of this month. But as you know, we cannot go into the building to distribute anything. We have no permission to do that. So the rings are going to stay there until we get directive from the Department of Education to open the school building so we can go in, set up phone calls to let you know when you can come in and pick it up in person. The same thing is going to happen to the diplomas. Once the students graduate in the month of June, we will have their diplomas ready. And once we open the school building, we will make phone calls to have parents and students to come by to sign out their diplomas. Ms. Toll, we have a question that they want to know if they have to pay separately for the yearbook. OK, we're going to get there. For the yearbook, we're going to go there. All right, so right now, we have a picture orders. And we, we are explaining it to you in two categories. And this are uh, good and bad news about the categories. We have 176 eighth graders. And out of 176 eighth graders, we all had 90 kids that took the pictures. And pay, sorry, all the kids took the picture, but only 90, 90 kids paid for the picture. If you took the picture and you pay for the picture, your pictures are ready but there is no way they're gonna get to you until we get a day to open the school so you can come and pick them up from us. The DOE does not want any independent um, vendor delivering anything to the students because that will mean that we have to share your personal um, addresses. And DOE find it to be very sensitive and therefore we are not doing that. So again, to pick up pictures that are ready, those that were paid, the 90 of you, I have the list. You can reach out to me directly or to Mr. Duran. We can give you confirmation. Once we have those pictures in our hands sometime in June, we're going to devise a plan so the picture can be somehow get to you because you're not going to be allowed to come into the building in June either. The DOE is working in uh, preparing um, some sort of contract with a carrier, and that carrier, which is paid by the DOE, will take on the task to make sure that anything that needs to get to you, gets to you. Now, the students that took the picture and did not pay the picture, you have a luxury. We are going to share with you by email the information of the photo company. You can go onto the website, you can reach out to them and you can order the pictures online and pay for delivery directly with them at your own responsibility, at your own liability. And they can email the, and they can send them to you, ship them to you via um, post office or whichever carrier they have. But people that took the picture and have not paid are the only ones that have that ability to do that. So if you want more information about that, just reach out to us via email and we will send you the information so you can contact the photography company. Any questions about pictures? Okay. No. All right, so moving up ceremony. Right now we are going to have a virtual moving up ceremony. Honestly, I've we've been researching about it. We see how it looks. Um, it's not very complex, but it's an option. It is something that's been around at the college level since 2010 for students that decide to go to college virtually because they don't go to a campus, but they do their coursework virtually and they get to earn their degrees virtually. 
So since 2010, this has been a, um, a movement and, an, and a trend. So we are going to resort to do this this time around. Our virtual moving off ceremony is scheduled for June 24th. Um, we don't have the directive from the DOE as to who is going to be our provider, but as soon as DOE provide that information to us, we're gonna email it to you um, and to the student's email as well, so you can have the information. We also wanna call on a meeting like this one, so we can answer more questions in depth um, about this particular topic, virtual moving off ceremony, June 24th. Dress code, students are not going to wear the gown, uh, but we are working with a vendor that is going to facilitate the caps. So we're gonna order the caps with the tassels and we are going to be able to order a senior class 2020 t-shirt. Um, once that gets delivered to the school building, we are gonna try to get um, permission from central office so one person can go into the building to pack everything so the contract courier from the DOE can come in into the building, take all these packages that we're gonna bundle up and send them to home. In that package, which we are expecting to prepare it between June 11th and June 12th, we will include the cap and tassel, the senior t-shirt, the yearbook, and the pictures that you have paid for. The ring is not going to be included in there because it's in a small jewel and we don't want it to, to be lost. But those four items are to be packed between June 10 and 11th and we're hoping that the deliver, the carrier delivery can come into the, the building sometime June 12th, pick it up and make sure that they deliver these items to your households. So make sure that your addresses are are updated with us that we have the right address because if you don't get your package, it's not going to be because probably we made a mistake, but because we never got the correct address from you. Whatever we have right now is whatever we got from you since before June 12th when the school building was closed. So if there's anything new, you must let us know so we can make corrections at our end. Miss Paul, there's a mother that uh, she wants to know what color uh, would the cap be? The cap for the girls is going to be white and for the boys is going to be royal blue. Those are the colors of the school. And the t-shirt is going to be uh, probably um, a light blue t-shirt blending in between the two colors um, with, um, with the message for the class of 2020. So we all can be uniform. Are we doing the uh, virtual graduation ceremony on Google Meet? We don't know that means. We have to wait for DOE to let us know. Right, Mary wanted to know. Yeah, DOE have to let us know. Once we know, we're gonna do a meeting just like this one to go over that particular item. All right. Um, Parents, we need your help. Mr. Dunan, can you tell me how many parents uh, we sort of, we have on the, on the on participating tonight? We have more or less like about 20. Okay. So if you um, are friends or acquaintance with any other parents that were not here this evening, um, sharing this uh, information um, with them will be uh, really appreciated if you have contact with any of them. Um, the more we know, the more informed we are, the better we are equipped to make decisions. So um, for the eighth grade, we are trying to put together for the moving up ceremony, a music video project. And we are utilizing a rap song that was uh, taken from Hamilton, a Broadway play um, that has a song uh, titled My Shot. The song is a rap. Um, it's very um, empowering. The lyrics are very empowering. And we have a software at our end, our music teacher, uh, Ms. Mayer, that she will take a student self-recording to put it together so they can make it look like all the students are being part of a bigger puzzle, which is everyone rapping the song. Now, we presented this idea to our students about almost two weeks ago and 
we have not been very successful of getting eighth graders participating. Granted, we understand that we can afford students to do something they don't want. But again, I have appeal to the fact that they may not have the maturity to understand the importance of this now, but 10 years from now, they're going to look back and they will have the maturity to say and remember, wow, I was part of this. So we are asking parents, if you can please intercede for us and ask your children to follow this small project. It doesn't have to be the whole song, as I explained to them. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, anything they're not comfortable with the lyrics. They can pick even the choir of the lyric and um, rap it as they record themselves with headphones listening to the song. We cannot listen to the song because we're going to put the song on the background, but we need to listen to them singing. And the only reason why they need to have the headphones on is because they need to be listening to the, to the song as they read it so they can keep up with the, right, with the rhythms and the beats. So we can tune that video with our software and make everything look like we, you know, we made it ourselves live but all, everything is going to be virtually uh, put together. Second, the TASO project for graduating virtual students. Um, and I know this, um, there's a difference between the adult, the adults and, the, and teenagers. And I was talking about this with one of our counselors this morning. We adults have no problem sharing our images when we are conducting these video conferences. And one of the reasons for that is because we have the maturity and the confidence to engage in a conversation uh, virtually face to face with someone else. Our students, our teenagers are not comfortable doing that. Most of them don't want to show their faces. Most of them um, have on their profile pictures. Sorry, on their profile pictures, uh, they have uh, cartoons. They have images of things that are not human. Um, and again, that's okay. That's how they identify at this time of their life. But if we do the virtual ceremony, we are expecting them to show their faces. Now, because again, we cannot force them to do that because it is a challenge that we all are having. Ms. Soriano, the, art, the digital art teacher, came up with this idea. She's willing to work with students that are now willing to show their faces during the virtual ceremony, create a virtual tassel digitally that they can use and put it on their profile picture. So that day when they, their name is called or when they are part of the video that we are putting together, that image of that tassel that they did for themselves, representing themselves, it is what it's going to show. So that is just an alternative that we have because honestly, I will open the floor. We do not know what else to do. Your children are not mm -hmm. open to show their faces. They're not open to self-record themselves and be part of this music project that is for their memories and for your memories as parents. So with that said, I am going to open um, the mic and the chat for you to please um, express your your concerns or any questions you have. Thank you for all that information. Um, I still have that question regarding the the yearbook if there's a price for the yearbook if we haven't already paid for it no you haven't paid for it and uh we are trying to pay for it so if you have to pay for it we will let you know thank you so much you're welcome miss po i have ready here a an example of what you want to do with the video right. uh, can, you present, can you present it uh i don't think so you you have the I you could put the link and you could present it in your on your side. All right, perfect. So please share it with me. You're gonna send it to my email? It's in the chat. I it's put it on the chat the already. All right, so let me go to the chat. All right. So let's see if we can. All right. 
Here we go. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall, no one would hear. Well, let the lonely feeling wash away. Maybe there's a reason to believe it'll be okay. Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stay, you can reach, reach out your hand And oh, someone will come running And I know they'll take you home Even when the dark comes crashing through When you need a friend to carry you And when you're broken on the ground you will be found. So let the sun come straight. All right, here I am. Um, so that is the idea that we are trying to do now. We're not doing a song because it's very difficult to tune everybody's voices to the rhyme of a song. We are doing a rap. Um, it is the easiest way, and everyone can rap. You don't need to have the most splendid, um, you know, virtuoso voice to do a rap. All you, they need to do is literally, um, I will show you uh, a, a piece of the, of the song that we are trying to do. And this is uh, what we are asking them. Out of the song that I'm about to show you, they could do any part of it. They could do the whole thing. They can do the chorus. They can do literally any part. They can do five seconds, 10 seconds of it. Whatever they do, it will be a contribution to the bigger piece. This is what we're asking them to do. Put your headphones, just like in the picture, and wrap any part of this song that you feel comfortable with and do it like nobody's watching you. I am not thrown away my shot. I am not thrown away my shot. And I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not thrown away my shot. I'm going to get a scholarship to King's College. I probably should brag with Gag, I'm amazed, astonished. The problem is I got a lot of brains, but no polish. I gotta holler just to be heard with every word. I drop knowledge on the diamond in the rough. A shiny piece of coal, trying to reach my goal. My power of speech, unimpeachable. Only 19, but my mind is sober. New York City streets get cold. I shoulder every burden, every disadvantage. I've learned to manage. I don't have a gun to brandish. I walk these streets famished. The plan is to defend this walk into a flame. But damn, it's getting dark, so let me spell out the name. I am the A out. project and um, we're just waiting for kids to brave up and be courageous and do their little piece of the puzzle so we can put it together we our last day to collect them is going to be uh, Friday and whoever we get if only 10 people do it then we'll do it with 10 people but remember those are the 10 people that are going to get to give you this gift for of memory to your virtual moving up ceremony. It can be 25 uh, second video, 30 second video. You decide what part of the song you would like to sing so you can contribute to the video. And then Miss May eventually will put all the uh, pieces together and she will create um, the entire song. Hi, Miss Paul. this is Gable's mom. Um, how about the iPads? 
I, he received one in the mail. So oh, don't worry about the iPad. Once we come back to the building, the OE will tell us what to do, and mm -hmm. we will reach out to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good question, though. We all wondering what we're gonna do with these devices that don't belong to us. <laughs> yeah, I don't want. I don't want to take responsibility for it. Yeah, I understand <laughs> that. All tied to it, and um, the OE will tell us what to do, and we will communicate with you guys. Mm -hmm. As per the DOE right now, we uh, a communication was sent to us that um, iPads will be returned to the students' um, homeschool, but that may change. As of right now, that's the plan. So um, Gabriel will bring it back to MS390, but we will let you know if that changes. Okay, awesome, thank you. I just right. wanna remind you all that there is study hall for math, ELA, social studies, so that any students that may be struggling with any of those topics, the schedule is posted up uh, weekly for them. And it's also in a Google Classroom that's called Study Hall. All right, the t-shirt sizes, we're gonna be requesting them from you um, sometime next week. So you're gonna get an email from me asking you for your t-shirt size so we can get your size for, for the order. Okay, um, you don't have to pay for the t-shirt. You don't have to pay for the uh, cap and tassel. And we are hoping you don't have to pay for the yearbook. So we're trying to cover all those expenses for you. Okay, so unless I come back to you on another meeting or message telling you you have to pay, don't worry about it right now. Okay, so the high, a very good question. Someone asked about high school. Whichever school accepted your child and you know that your child is going there, all high schools will contact you to let you know when is the orientation for coming ninth graders. So you just have to make sure that your lines are available, your emails are available, because the school will reach out to you. If you don't hear from them by the second week in June, um, you can reach out to us. We can probably help you find out the phone number of the school so you can reach out to them and inquire about the orientation because every school, every high school is going to have a ninth grade orientation. What is I'm the trying case? to help answer because All they right. asked what happened if the high school doesn't open? I'm sure the school will send a letter in the mail with instructions stating yeah, thank what's you. gonna happen or an email. Ms. Paul, I have a question about your life skill sessions. Are those mandatory? They're not mandatory, but it's a way of enriching. Well, it's mandatory for me because I need to show that I'm used, I'm utilizing my time in a way that is uh, productive and enriching for the life of my teenagers. Okay. So I am expected to engage in activities that, you know, have the kids interest somehow. If they're not part of it, if they're not there, I mean, I cannot force them, but I need to expose them to this type of information. Okay, got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Ms. Paul? Yes, I'm listening. Can you explain the spirit thing again? The spirit week, we're going to send you an email, sweetheart, because we're still trying to find out what is the theme that you guys want. We want you to pick the theme. So we're going to send you a survey tonight. You pick a theme out of the three that we're going to share, and then the majority is going to get to do that. All right, if you don't have any other question, you can leave the chat, you can leave the video. If you still wanna hang around for about five more minutes um, and engage, uh, please do so. I hope that if your parents were not in the conference that you are able to share this. We did rec this recorded it. So we're gonna email the recording to all the eighth grade emails so your parents can have access to it as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Ms. Paul. I just want to tell you how grateful we are that you put this platform out there for us to reach out and, and stay in communication. It's like they're, it's, it's like they're still in the building because you guys are, have been so great at doing these meetings and all the classes. So I just want to say thank you. No, thank you very much for collaborating and for supporting us. Listen, there's no school without parents and students. So we wouldn't be here <laughs> if it weren't for you guys. Thank um, you. Thank you.